Everybody, it's Ketra Marie with KM Designs and I am in the studio and we are talking a little bit this morning about some farmhouse love. I have a few little projects that I have going on because I am redoing my kitchen and I so want to live in the country and I so want to live on a farm, but until I actually get there, I'm trying to transform my kitchen to give it that shabby, chic French look, that farmhouse been around for a hundred years and it just needs someone to come in and show it a little TLC. So I want to thank my daughter actually for this project because she is pregnant with her third child and she had made this really really cute sign um, with the baby's name on it and I thought oh my god I absolutely love that and then you know the trend right now is all of these signs everybody is doing signs and if anybody knows me they know I live very frugal, very minimal. Um, if it's not on sale, if it's not at the resale shop, um, I don't buy. And if I can make it, I am much happier. So I'm going to show you a few of the projects that I've kind of come up with, um, with some materials that are left over from the hardware store, um, materials that you get left over from jobs that you don't know what to do with and you don't really want to throw them away because you think, oh, I might be able to need that. So anyway, let's talk first about the sign. Okay, now, because I am an artist and because I do teach painting lessons, I always have leftover canvas and I use my canvases over and over and over and over again. So. I'm going to bring this in a little closer and hope somewhere along the line you can see, there we go, the texture. Now I didn't do a whole lot of texturizing on this one. There you go, you can kind of see it, but I wanted to give it like it had been around for a really, really long time. So here's the trick, okay? So I have over here, I'll show you, a larger canvas. Now, what you want to do, I will try to set this up like this so you can kind of see, and you can see I've used this canvas before, and you can use decoupage. It is a little expensive, $7 for something like this. I think it's ridiculous. Or, do yourself a favor, go to the dollar store, pick yourself up a thing of glue, and water it down. It will give you the same effect as decoupage. You don't need it to be shiny and you can spray a varnish over it if you want it shiny afterwards. Also, I always use a lid from leftover Tupperware. How many lids do you have that you don't know where the other part of the container is? So you're like, okay, now what do I do with it? So this is what I use for my glue and for my paints. So you are going to take some of your decoupage, a sponge brush because you don't want the brush hair. You are going to just put a dab on like so. And you are going to take a napkin, just a regular old dinner napkin. You are gonna tear it you're going to place it on the decoupage. You're going to kind of scrunch it. And the more wrinkles it has in it, the better it will look when it's all done. Now, I went ahead and I did a few ahead of time just to kind of give you an idea. And then, so you will do your whole canvas. I'll do one more to kind of show you. And you can use paper towels, you can use napkins. Um, I'll use a paper towel on this one. And you're just gonna lay it down. You're gonna kinda crinkle it up, smush it on in. Like that word, smush. And then you will go over it again with some of your decoupage. Now before you go to try to paint over it or draw over it, you do want to let it dry at least a good 24 hours. So if you can see that, it is the beginning of giving it that aged look like it's been around for a long time. Okay, so on to the next thing. Let's talk about your fonts. 
your signage. Like my daughter said, God love her, she said, Mom, just go print it off on the computer. Find the font you want, find the size that you want, and then just print it off. Now, because I am doing that country kind of French, I have farm, I have eggs, I have a whole bunch of stuff here. I have French, I have chic, oh, what else is in here? And I have shabby, and I think I have love in here too, and fresh. So, now I am choosing the French script from your font, from your Microsoft Word, but go pick whichever one that you want. You then are going to, after you have put your decoupage paper and you have painted your canvas whatever color you want, I have like an antique kind of white, you are going to take your font paper, you are going to go get some carbon paper, okay, you are going to place it on your board, of course now you would be doing it flat, I'm just showing you, but you're going to place your carbon paper and then you're going to take your lettering and you are going to outline around your lettering and go a little bit above what your font is. It gives you room for mistakes and you can always fill it in with whatever color that you want. So I went ahead and I did farm eggs and I will probably color that in with black, I'll paint it in. So that's on my little canvas there. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you. If you look behind me, where is it at? I will beadboard. I did this some years back. Uh, I wanted it to look like something that you could pull right off the side of a barn. It was left over from an old kitchen project from my old house and I thought, what can I do with it? What can I do with it? And I'm like, I know, I'm just going to glue it together, very Baroque style, which means no order, kind of here, there, everywhere. And I decided I was going to stain it. Now you don't need to go buy a expensive stain either. You can take a dark color, water it down, and use it with a sponge, paint it on, and kind of wipe it to get the color that you want. And then I went ahead and I painted a chicken rooster and put some lettering up there myself. So, with all that said, I have some beadboard left from, again, another project. And what you want to do is, where all the grooves are, take a paintbrush, just a regular paintbrush. Make sure all the dust is out of all the grooves. Get yourself some good wood glue. Unfortunately, you can't scrimp because you want to be able to make sure that your wood is going to stay together. A good wood glue uh, will last forever. Um, make sure when you're done, though, you clean it off because you spend more time trying to clean the little nozzle thing off trying to use it. So you are going to take and very generously, give me a second here, get some muscle, and you are going to go along the groove line, like so. You can see in there, I missed probably a couple of spots. You want to make sure that it is like really, really caked on the glue, and you are going to line it up, and you are going to glue it like so. You can do it in order so it's even, and then you want to lay it flat and let it dry again for a good 24 hours. So that is that. Then, there's more. Now because in my kitchen, sorry, because in my kitchen I have a strawberry motif around my tile with some kind of greenish lime colored leaves. I went ahead and I did a small beadboard again from leftover materials. I painted it that lime green. So it is 
put together. It is sturdy. Okay, so I wanted to give that antique like it has been around for over a hundred years. Granted, they probably didn't have the lime color a hundred years ago, but I needed it. So, sandpaper. You can use a sanding block. You can use an electric sander. I kind of like doing it by hand and manual because, one, it's a good arm workout. And because I am kind of a health nut. And you want to take off that first layer of paint. You want to make sure that your edges are showing some of the wood through. So, and you want to go ahead and sand it. Now you can give it whatever kind of old finish you want. I still have a long way to go on this, but you kind of get the whole idea. And I will go ahead and I will do that same principle with the carbon paper. Put it down, find the word that I want. Probably this one will say shabby on it. Because like I said, I'm going for that French Chevy chic farmhouse look. Trying to create the environment that I want. I very much believe in law of attraction and what you can see in your mind and what you believe in your heart. You can achieve it and you can create that environment. So until I am able to get to the place I want to go, which I will be two years when my kid's out of school, I'm on that two-year plan. Um, I'm going to the country. I'm going to find that farmhouse. Um, I will have a few chickens, my pets, um, my horses. I miss my horses. I haven't been out there in a while. I hurt my shoulder. Also, doing this with the sanding, it is a great exercise. You don't need physical therapy. So I will finish sanding this down, and then I will decide where I want the placement on my letter. And then I will get that going. And then I wanted to show you one last thing. These, these little shelves. If you go into any of the thrift stores, any of the antique um, malls, they have them. They are like next to nothing to pick them up. So because I'm trying to give it that old kind of look, it's the same principle. I went ahead and I whitewashed it with just a white, an antique, and used leftover paint. Go into the hardware store and go to the paint section and look for the oops. You can save so much money buying somebody else's mistake. So you will go and you'll give it a whitewash, pick your color, any color, it doesn't matter, whatever makes you happy. It goes in your house, it's going in, in your environment, you have to look at it all the time. And then once you get a couple coats of paint on it, same principle. Get yourself your um, sanding paper and just kind of sand it down. You want to make sure that the wood is showing. I'll try to get that as close as I can. Get it just as aged as you want. Now, I just think this is absolutely cute. I have three other shelves that I am putting in my own kitchen. I have a chandelier that was gold. I picked up for next to nothing. I spray painted it white. I'm gonna go buy some crystals and a few little prisms to hang on it. And I will have my farmhouse kitchen. So this morning, as I am working on these projects to try to create the environment that I wanna live in, I just wanted to give you a few little tips. If you like any of my videos, please feel free to share. I am Kitra Marie. I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I'm a photographer. I'm a speaker on Law of Attraction. Um, I teach painting lessons. If you would like to take any of my classes, you can email me at kitramarie at gmail.com. You can see all my work at kitramarie.weebly.com. Um, find me on all the social networks, um, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. So enjoy your day, be happy, and be blessed. And I will see you real soon with another project coming from my studio. Enjoy the day. Bye.